What's going on YouTube? This is the Med School Gamer here for some more casual play and casual results. Actually, this is a pretty good game and I wanted to share it with you because it underscores how you can use the Miyoko in a way that can just help your team out and help you to have a decent game. Now, this ship, like all of the Japanese cruisers, can be a little bit difficult to wrap your mind around. Uh, it does best on the retreat. It's got the two uh, swivel torpedo tubes on the back that basically make it good for running away. So it's hard to be aggressive in this ship. So I find myself uh, being more defensive. You see as I start here, I kind of peel off on the two brothers map. I never go for the, the middle run. I know some people really like it and some people like to camp and wait for everyone to come through the channel for the run and you know sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't i find it's more reliable just to head over to these islands over here there's a lot of good hiding places for you cruiser players so you can just lob your shells and be an ever-living nightmare to the battleships trying to creep around the long way so we see a smoke screen out in the distance i find it funny when destroyers drop their smoke screens this early usually doesn't seem to work out because they're usually trying to mask a battleship and you know it just at this at this tier of play i don't think it's all that useful but that's just my opinion i'm not a high tier destroyer player by any stretch of the imagination so my first part of this battle i'm trying to hug up against this island in a way that i can kind of pop out and play some peekaboo with anything coming around that corner and, lucky me, I get a German battleship coming around and, you know, German battleships, they've got that turtle back armor scheme and it makes it difficult to, uh, to use your armor piercing on them, but this Miyoko is a pretty decent fire starter, especially at range, it's got good dispersion and it fires a lot of shells, it doesn't fire them as quickly as you would want for a fire starter, the reload's like 12 seconds or so. So it's not the best for that, but you can see it's pretty good for um, peeking in and out. And you see he's run aground up there, so he's not really moving anywhere fast. So we get another salvo out. By the time he's tracked down to me, and this time I probably I took a, I was a little bit slow in um, reversing and getting back, and so I might get punished for this a bit because you never want to be at this angle to any battleship, even if it's a horrible dispersion German battleship. And so again, I tuck in. I know there's a destroyer lurking out here somewhere, and I'm kind of hoping that he's just going to pop out around this corner and then give me a shot. Like, you know, that usually isn't what happens. Destroyer players are smart, especially at this tier, so can't count on anything like that. But you just love it when you get to play against idiots. So, so I'm waiting behind this island, and you kind of have to play these ships, these uh, any cruiser, but especially these Japanese ones, uh, really cautiously. So I knew I was detected for a split second there. I obviously wasn't detected by anything through that island here. So I know that that destroyer is out front of me somewhere, and he spotted me, so he knows I'm hiding behind this island. So he's going to be launching torpedoes like crazy around this, hoping that I'm going to poke my nose out and get the uh, instant flooding by getting a nose torpedo shot. And I'm detected again. So I know he's out there somewhere sitting out on this right side of my ship trying to um, get a cheeky torpedo run in and I'm just waiting for him. I've got the speed modification on my ship so that I uh, accelerate 50% faster, which is really nice for these faster Japanese cruisers um, because it just makes you agile, makes you harder to hit, and gives you a lot more options because in cruisers when you screw up, it uh, has really bad consequences. Like, you can screw up in a battleship. I think that's one reason why people like playing battleships so much, is you can screw up in them pretty hard and not take too much damage sometimes. I mean, obviously, if you're sitting broadside to an Iowa or something, you're not going to have a good day. But you've got the health pool and some heals, so you can get away with stuff in battleships. If you you know, play games in a cruiser like that, you know, where you're sitting broadside to something, where you're, you know, sneaking around an island that you know a destroyer's hiding behind, and you know you don't really have a chance to to recover from that. 
and don't get torpedoes you know any ahead. time to come back and yep here it is here's the torpedoes that I've been waiting for and unfortunately the uh, French battleship behind me has <laughs> a bad day as he sneaks around this corner and gets wasted by the by the destroyer that you know, maybe he knew that the destroyer was out there, maybe not. It can be hard when you're not the one getting detected and undetected and stuff. And, you know, he might have thought he was perfectly safe because that destroyer hasn't really been detected yet. And so this is where, this is the part of the match that I kind of screw the pooch. So this is where my definite casual level of play comes in. And you can see that, all right, another set of torpedoes going by there. Um, he's uh, smoked up here straight ahead of me. I've got two battleships, um, the German and the American ship that are all over me. So there's actually two destroyers out here, both of them, and I didn't realize this at first. I thought it was the one, so the other guy pops up behind me. And I'm like, oh shoot, like, now I'm fighting all these battleships. There's a destroyer right ahead of me, and I didn't even realize it's a dead destroyer. Somebody already killed him anyway. And so this is where my screw up, I really should have died right here. Like, this is the point in the game I should have been completely dead. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe I can wheel around, get some torpedoes off, and, you know, GG, but... but luckily, I think part of it's, you know, having that speed mod helped me to uh, motor out of there pretty quick. And as you can see, I'm trying to... I'm trying to wheel right and left, trying to make it difficult for them to to get good penetrations on my ship, trying to get that um, back-sitting citadel moving so that they can't just delete me automatically. Get some nice shots right into the rock there, because I couldn't wait the split second for the gap. And so now I can turn, turn my full attention, now that I'm behind the island and a little bit protected from the battleships, I can turn my full attention to this destroyer here. As you see, got a got a nice torpedo hit on the, on the American battleship. So, um, unfortunately, I've already used up my hydro, so I'm flying blind. But you just know that torpedoes are going to be coming, so you just have to uh, plan for it. Now, this is where this is where the Miyoko shines. This is where all of these uh, Japanese cruisers shine, is while getting chased and. It's better if you're not getting chased by a big, ugly Colorado pitching high, uh, pitching high, pitching armor piercing at you. But you can make you can make do. So you can see, I'm dodging, weaving. You've got three turrets on the back, so you can uh, well, two turrets on the back, so you can uh, keep spamming some high explosive, trying to set some fires. You've got those backward launching torpedo tubes, so if they try and follow you too closely, then um, they'll get torped to death. And again, see, like, battleship dispersion is not that good. I think cruiser dispersion is better in a lot of instances, but that just might be me thinking it's better because you get so many more shots, you get so much more fire in the air. And that's also why I prefer high explosive on these things, because you have so many more chances to set fires and... You know, it, it's all balanced, but you see what I mean, where this guy's following us, he's got almost no health left, and we're able to take him out. Alright, so now that I've sunk him, I see that we're in a situation over at our base where there's two ships uh, attacking one of ours defending, and there's nothing else uh, guarding our cap, so I know that it's up to me to try and make the difference here. Um, I also look to the south and I see that we have two destroyers coming in on their uh, cap. And there goes our one defender over at our cap. And so I'm thinking, okay, destroyers, are two destroyers up against two battleships. They have a chance of winning that down there. But for them to have a chance of capping before the people up here cap, I've got to slow these guys down. So I need to get some shots into them. I need to uh, use everything I can to possibly slow them down in the capping process to give my destroyers a chance to... Uh, make the difference down at the enemy cap. So I'm going all speed forward. Now usually, you know, I'd like to kite, you know, a little higher. You can see my 
detection range is going right into our cap, so I know that they're gonna see me as soon as I see them, basically. Or at least their Atlanta is. I believe it's an Atlanta and a French battleship over there. So, I would like to do this a little bit more subtly rather than just uh, paddling into open water right in front of them. As you can see, our our friends just took out one of their battleships, so now it's just uh, them taking on one more to take their cap. And so it's like, okay. Um, like I was saying, I would like to do this more sneaky-like, but at this point I just need to detect what's in our cap and get some shots on target to try and reset the uh, capture point and their capture progress. Now, re-watching this, I would have played this very uh, differently because I turn right broadside to him just so I can try and get some torpedoes in. And the Atlanta's on, like, no health, but I had already taken my shot. Wait, I mean, which is a good thing. We got a defender medal. We uh, reset the progress of the uh, French battleship. The ship is on fire. And so, I mean, it wasn't, like, a bad, bad move, but if I could have just gotten one shot on the Atlanta, then it would have died and my problems would be cut in half. So I think that this um, battleship's going to cut in and try and go inside the island. So I'm like, all right, I'll put some torpedoes in the water. I'll try and get behind here. And again, the Atlanta pops up, and this is me not paying attention. We're both on super low health at this point. And I'm like, OK, I've got torpedoes in the water. If I can just get one shot on this Atlanta, this will be our chance to, uh, to save the game and give our boys a chance down south. And that's exactly what happens. So. Um, I get killed, no surprise, I was on like no health, and the, the Atlanta gets killed, so that reset our cap, I'd already reset our progress once. We've got two people in their capture point, so we can capture faster than they can, and unfortunately, all my torpedoes missed because they turned the other way. You know, it, was, it was a stupid plan, but it worked out. So. Now it's just a waiting game. We've got two ships in their cap. They've got one an hour, so we're obviously going to win that. They're in a battleship, so there's no way in the world that they're going to be able to get down there faster than uh, they would need to. So overall, this ends up being a pretty good game for us. We're able to uh, play strategically and uh, hold our side of the map up, while at the same time being able to come back to our cap and save it for our team in the end. Uh, good job to my teammates, who also played fantastically with the Destroyers, uh, holding up their part. And yeah, we can be proud of that. Over 100,000 damage, 3 kills, and uh, number 1 spot on our team. Well, thank you everybody for watching, and we'll catch you next time.